Hey guys, it's Clay from Clear Critique. April's coming up, film release schedules are as tumultuous as Heartbeats post Monster, and so today I'm gonna go through five movies coming out this April, when and where to check them out, and whether you should watch them, wait a while for more reviews, or avoid at all costs. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe, and be sure to comment below with your thoughts on any of these movies. Here we go! First up is Thunder Force, a new comedy starring Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. In terms of trailers, is there any fail more colossal than a comedy that doesn't make you laugh? It's not hard to get a chuckle at me, really, but here I'm watching these antics with a face like granite. A superhero comedy can work, has proven to work, but the lack of effort here is plain as day. Pretend you're a screenwriter. Write me a funny idea about superpowers. Any powers you want. Go. A multi-million dollar movie like Thunder Force gives us super strength and invisibility. <sighs> I get that these powers are practical for military purposes, but sorry, laughs come before plot in these kinds of flicks. And this is boring. It's a shame that the only somewhat barely interesting ability is Bateman as a lobster. No, I don't know what they are going for with that one, but it's something. These one-liners fall flat, style and imagination are absent, and Spencer's delivery of scientific jargon sounds like a child giving a presentation on a baking soda volcano. I mean, come on. Characters bungle their way through initial crime fighting until facing a larger threat from a pompous villain, lots of yelling and awkward reactions. We've been down this road so often the toll booth operator knows our name. I'll admit, I did laugh once, when McCarthy throws a bus, but only because of the atrocious visual effect. I love it. I'm not even being sarcastic, I'm glad the CGI is bad, because it looks so goofy, and comedies can greatly benefit from cheap effects. Throwing a bus! Yeah! Yeah! Overall though, this looks like garbage, starring actresses who should be in better work. You can watch Thunder Force on Netflix April 9th, but I sure won't be. Avoid this one. Next is the Japanese romantic drama Ride or Die. The story concerns a young girl who commits a horrific act in order to save a friend she's loved for years from domestic abuse. With such a story, a film could go many different directions, both plot-wise and in mood. Do you focus on love, portraying how passion can form from hardship, or do you tilt towards the violence itself? The marketing and plot details online seem to answer… yes. The trailer is very short and very strange, featuring terribly hokey music. I don't know what to call this, when a singer's raspiness sounds almost fake. And I'm sorry again. However, the images here are intriguing. There's a shot I can't show of one of the girls showering off a deluge of blood. Tears, smiles, rage, and some nice shot composition all share the 30 second or so trailer. I'm always curious of movies that swirl different tones together because it's a gamble, one that can go hilariously wrong or rise to masterwork. There's a brutality seeping at the edges here that you don't see often in romances that makes it stand out. Ride or Die hits Netflix April 15th, and I'm gonna give this one a watch. Next is Mortal Kombat, based on the infamous arcade beat-em-up. A lot of people are pumped for this movie. And I have one question. Are you guys, like, okay? I don't mean lacking sanity or intelligence, I mean, is there a reason you let people hurt you like this? Video game movies have let you down every single time. At best, they're digestible. At worst, they're the worst. Oh come on, sure decades ago there were some bad ones, but they were just handing these properties off to people like Uwe Boll. They've gotten so much better. Oh have they? It's a budget problem. These films never get enough money for good effects or stars. Oh, like the most recent Tomb Raider or Assassin's Creed? Well, I didn't see those. No one did. But those movies went all gritty. If they had a budget and made them, like, colorful, it would work. Like World of Warcraft? You know, whatever. They aren't picking the right genre. You know what that means? Mortal Kombat is a fighting game. They haven't done that yet. Well, shit. Guys, video game movies haven't been good to you. Stop letting them hurt you. If a simple, get over here, is enough for you to shell out $20, you're telling Hollywood to keep disappointing you. Let them go. 
I mean, look at you. You're gorgeous. You can do better. I think a video game movie can work, but it has to be the right game with the right approach. And so I have mixed feelings about this trailer. For starters, it gave me the Dark Knight vibes with its dramatic music and dark aesthetic. Mortal Kombat is inherently goofy, and sapping the color out isn't just a step in the wrong direction, but a kick to the gas pedal by a cliffside. Also, hopefully the CGI gets a tune-up, because damn. Now before you guys hate me, I am trying to look at the positives, and the trailer did improve as it went on. Everything with Sub-Zero is eye-catching, such as using frozen blood as a weapon. And I know I'm about to give someone a stiffy, but I wonder if they drew inspiration from Full Metal Alchemist. We don't get many good fighting movies these days, and a flashy, bloody Mortal Kombat would be delightful if done right. But I'm also not into self-flagellation, so based on the trailer and the game, I'm giving this an avoid. Mortal Kombat comes out in theaters April 16th, and I truly hope my expectations are wrong. Next up is the South Korean gangster film Night in Paradise. It initially premiered on September 3rd, and the few reviews I've read focused on a certain degree of indulgence. The music is heavy-handed, the drama might swell into sentimentality, and the action is ruthless. Also, it's over two hours. That might not do it for some people, especially the runtime, but the film has a lot going for it. It's written and directed by Park Hoon Young, who wrote the evocative and hyper-violent I Saw the Devil. South Korea in general has produced some solid gangster flicks, and they know how to shoot action in a way that's both elegant and visceral. The trailer and some promotional footage look good too. There are some tense looking action beats, some involving many people that calls to mind the relentless combat of the Raid series. Certain shots are striking and expansive. I especially like the one of two characters smoking cigarettes on a beach. I feel like I know them already, their closeness to death and their dispassionate attitude towards life. The story will likely be simple, providing a solid base for an emotional bond and fierce action to develop. And for action romances, that's the best way to go. I think this one could be rad. Night in Paradise comes to Netflix on April 9th, and I'm giving it a watch. Last up is Without Remorse, based on a novel by the late Tom Clancy. Some of you probably know that name best from the video games, others from the books. I know him best from the nights my dad would command me to sit and watch films based on Clancy's work. So I never read the book this is based on, and if you have, please comment below because I'm seeing a lot of people talk about the source material being way more interesting than this trailer implies. Because, whew, this is cliche central. A Navy SEAL who's living a normal life, but then, dun dun dun. His wife is murdered in their home. He's wounded, but survives. He's the best at his job, has a very particular set of skills. He has nothing else to live for. He took everything from me. And now he's out for revenge. Jesus Christ, I swear. Hollywood isn't just remaking movies now, they're copying scripts, changing just enough to avoid plagiarism like a college essay written at 3 a.m. I will give the film a couple points of promise. Michael B. Jordan is a good actor, and maybe he'll elevate the script, but like Michael Fassbender and Emil Hirsch, he must play pin the tail on the donkey when choosing scripts. I also like this underwater shot. There's not a lot of amphibian gunfights out there. I may have been warmer towards this trailer if it didn't end with the stupidest sequence ever. Our protagonist pours gasoline on a car and lights it up. All right, cool. Glad he's not walking away in slow motion when it explodes. Oh, poo, I forgot something in the car. Time to interrogate this guy. Supposed to be dead. Give me a name. Seriously? Is he going to get information from the next guy by jumping off a balcony with him? I don't know, this is, this is just stupid. Look, I have no problem with someone writing a simple setup or using familiar tropes, but you gotta do something new or impressive with it. And this is deja vu the motion picture. Without Remorse comes to Amazon Prime on April 30th, and I'm giving this one an avoid. So what are your predictions for these five movies? Do you plan on seeing any of them? Was I too harsh? Be sure to check out my rankings of series like Star Wars and in the near future Peaky Blinders. Share and subscribe to support the channel, and as always, thanks for watching.